everyone. Welcome to the Envelopes Emmy Contender Series. I'm Yvonne Villarreal, and today we're talking to Lauren Graham, our favorite fast-talking mom, <laughs> Lorelai, from Gilmore Girls. She reprised her role for Netflix's revival of the series, to the delight of fans everywhere. And we'll be taking your questions as well, so shoot them over in our comments section. I was really trying to go for, like, saying it as fast as Lorelai, <laughs> but I can't do it. That was pretty fast. How do you good. do it? I don't know. I have spoken about this before, but I think when you're uh, it, when you're performing a, a really great piece of writing, it kind of tells you. I wouldn't. I, I remember during that time when, when I was first doing the show, I'd go on auditions for something else, yeah. and inevitably they'd say, "Tell her she doesn't have to talk that fast." And I was like, "I know, I know. This is only for this. This is what I do here." But you know, I do. I'm sort of speedy, I guess, in my mm -hmm. de demeanor, whatever. But um, but I there's a kind of a joy and a um, it's in, it's it that language does something to you you know it it it's really in, invigorating. Did you <laughs> did you have to learn like when to take your breaths, or it uh, just sort of came naturally? I don't know. I mean, the show evolved so much. If you go back to watch the pilot, mm -hmm. it wasn't at that pace. No, it wasn't and, there and, yet. and then I would say for the first year or two, it was sort of mainly my character mm -hmm. or the, the banter between Lorelai and Rory. And yeah. then eventually the entire town just took the same <laughs> uh, amount of coffee, I guess. And um, so it definitely requires more preparation yeah. than most TV. Uh, I, I liken it more to theater. It's mm -hmm. it. You've long speeches, long sentences that require some kind of, uh, you know, sculpting, mm -hmm. and um, and you have to be prepared. It's it's not. There are some shows and some scenes you can learn right then and mm -hmm. kind of keep them fresh. This requires um, preparation, and it's not fun to. In, in addition to all the other things that tend to go on in a scene, we do a lot of oneers, and yeah. so you don't want to be the reason we have to go, you know, 25 <laughs> yes, more times. Right. So um, you definitely definitely have to show up knowing your lines. What's it like to sort of be on the other side of it now? Like for so many years, you guys were asked about whether this show would ever come back. Would you be open to it? A yeah. movie, something, and to now have some time where this has been out there. Yeah. What has that been like? Um, it's really wonderful and a little bittersweet. You know, it was fun in some ways to have that question out there because what if, you know, what if we could, what if we did, um, what would that feel like, what would that be? And I, it was such an incredible, joyous rush to do it, um, to be back, to see the people, to have a greater sense of, what this has meant to me in my life, in my career, to just be able to feel thankful and um, and enjoy it, mm -hmm. you know. So that was one of it. Just was the most fun time I ever had. So if that's the last fun time I'll ever have, <laughs> I will be bummed out. Um, so it's been hard actually since then to look at other material and and imagine that it will meet that bar right. you know and it's that's always been a challenge I mean that character and that writing that creator you know Amy Sherman Palladino we we I just kind of have a great connection and a real similar taste and you know you need it's like finding a, a partner in life you know that's a person who I've created so much with it's I, it's, I don't know who my next work husband's gonna be <laughs> um, and it, he, he or she is hard to find. Yeah. Do you still have that email from 2014 where she said she was thinking of pitching to streaming services? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, you're going to frame that or give it to That's the a good Smithsonian idea. or something? Well, the problem is there were so many conversations and, and it had so many possibilities. And I was just thinking today, you know, there was another conversation years ago when... Um, she was in earnest trying to get it made as a as a movie, mm -hmm. a feature film, and um, it's just you know one thing that's interesting when I look back at the history of the show is how we continued to rise through a certain amount of being underestimated. You know the the feature film never happened because 
Amy was told it just wasn't a wide enough audience. It's women, you know, it's really just young women. They don't go to the movies. And I know, I know. And it's it's hard because the show is so happy and it does appeal to, to young people and, and families and stuff. But I think in that there's always been a certain amount of, of um, you know, it, it hasn't, people are always surprised when they see it to, to, to uh, see how smart the writing is and um, how complex the characters are. It is in sort of a fairy tale land, mm -hmm. but that's deceptive, I think. You know, there's so much more to it. So, um, yeah, so I miss it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can never delete that email. No, 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 no. But now what do I, it's, it's just the thing of, <laughs> well, now what email am I gonna never You're delete? You're like waiting you know? for the next email, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. Well, yeah. <laughs> I haven't finished enjoying, you know, the fact that we got to do it. Yeah. At any point, either in all that talk or the process of shooting, did you ever think to yourself, I don't know if this is a good idea. Like, should we be doing this? <laughs> no. Was there ever? Mm -mm. Yeah. I, of course, worried about how it would be perceived. I worried about, I remember sitting in some meeting before we started, and somebody said, you know, I love the show, but, you know, 40 minutes with commercial interruption, you can kind of reset your brain to get ready to hear <laughs> that much dialogue again. You know, in 90 minutes is that, can people handle it? And and I knew no matter what we did, some somebody was going to feel it wasn't what they wanted or they wanted more or less or of whatever. And I've, you know, I'm used to that as an actor. Um, none of that is kind of where I can live and mm -hmm. still do a good job, you know. Everybody criticizes every, you know, everything, but to me it felt like the show grown up as it had to. We couldn't have gone back and done CW ready episodes, you know, it had to feel bigger and it had to a little bit be, have some depth and sadness and darkness because that's what you need in a story of that length, and and it was true to where what we happened. what yeah. we were, where mm -hmm. we were, yeah. And I remember talking to John Stamos ahead of Fuller House coming back, mm -hmm. and he was saying, you know, I grappled with it because for so long I was trying to shed Uncle Jesse, mm -hmm. get people to see me as someone else, but then I was like, I'm in. This is the guy that put me on the map. Like, how could yeah. I not come back to him? Yeah. Like how, would you say you felt the same way for a period of I need to show I'm more than Lorelai, but I also wanna, I loved playing her too? I think it was the perfect amount of time to have had all those thoughts mm -hmm. and to have nothing but uh, gratitude and happiness to get to do it again. Mm -hmm. I, when we finished the show the first time, so much was confusing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we didn't have Amy and Dan, we, I think Alexis and I had, had worked at a level for an amount of time that we weren't sure how we felt about continuing. Mm -hmm. And and I remember feeling if I stayed and the show kind of went downhill, I was more afraid of that at that point. And I was, whatever I was, maybe just turned 40 or something. and 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 I had that kind of, ambition and I, I better you know time is clock is ticking I better get <laughs> yeah, out there and, yeah. and then I got out there and I did you know a couple of movies that were fun I don't know it's I I did this Broadway show that was sort of successful I, I sort of had these other experiences that I thought were what I wanted and and I, things you know to varying degrees measured up or didn't and I thought oh it's very difficult to be in something and understand what it is at the at the time. In a acting career, you maybe get one or two of you know roles that you're proud of, and the world has changed so greatly. You do something, it stays around forever. I mean, it can get replaced by the next thing, but I think the first time I realized that was when. I got pulled over for speeding one time, and the and the and the he was like in the process of writing me a ticket, and then he goes, "Hey, bad Santa," and I was like, "Yeah," and he goes, "Go ahead." And I was like, "Wow!" So it has its upside and its downside to be known for things, um, 
And I didn't get that then, you know, I didn't get that once you do something, it sort of stays around and thank goodness it's something I like this much. I was hoping you were going to say Caroline in the City or something, <laughs> my fave. Still um, waiting for that reboot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was also my favorite too, because I look back at that, I was so ignorant of how show business worked. <laughs> I walked in, I did a funny voice. I was still in like drama school in my mind. You know, I was like, I'm, I'm just gonna talk like that. I don't know, I just feel like she's, and they were all like, what are you doing? And yet they, <laughs> and it, it was fine. But just the kind of bravery I had then to kind of create characters and I didn't, you know, yeah. well, I wasn't gonna get a job. Mm -hmm. That was how, how I went. And now, now I go into things like, you know, is Lisa Kudrow up for it? Well, then never mind, or whatever it is, you know. So I think you have to really appreciate each time you're in yeah, for what it is, what you it know. Is. How was it being back on that set? Because I remember when I was on the set for the revival, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. And I wanted to take pictures of everything. Yeah. But you couldn't. But right. <laughs> I know. I'm they not you. So, I'm they not were you. so worried about, <laughs> about secrecy and privacy and... How did, did a feeling wash over you? Oh gosh, you? yeah. I mean, the other difference now is, I'm just at a different time of, of, um, of understanding what I got to do. Mm -hmm. I, I was so in the mindset of succeeding and mm -hmm. and being driven in my career. I wasn't thinking about how how lucky I was, and now I do. I think about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And so there was a much greater emotional sense. You know, back then I was like, okay, I got this job, I'm doing this, I gotta learn these lines, blah, 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 I gotta do this talk show or whatever. Okay. And this time it was probably oppressive to those around me <laughs> because I was like, I just wanna say, Taylor Dozy, thank you so much, you know? And he was like, what? what? I was like, I, but I just, I really appreciated each of our players, you know, yeah. and, and, and the fact that we got to be there again and, and, uh, and walking on any of those sets was, I was nervous too, which I don't remember being back in the day. That first table read, I was shaking, you know. I thought, I thought, what if it comes out of my mouth and it, it's everything's gone, you know, yeah. something, uh -huh. there was some kind of worry that, what if I couldn't connect to it again or something, and then, and then I did. Um, but it was really emotional. Which set were you most excited to visit once again? Well, there are just ones that bring back these memories, you know. Um, I would say the most memorable scenes I had were in my parents' house, you know, around that dinner table. And it's memorable both for what happened there and also how long they took yeah, or whatever. Yeah. You know, Ed Herman would be like, they got to get me out by 11, <laughs> so we got to go. And, um, and, and I even playing that character the first time, walking into that house always made me feel like a child yeah. again, you know. And... And, and the fact that they had reconstructed the house differently, just slightly differently, things I remembered, oh, you gotta take a sharp corner here because the camera can't see you, you know, just uh, technical things were, uh -huh. were different. So the same, but different. And I, I wrote about this in my book, but also, you know, we'd walk out and there's the Ellen stage. That's yeah. not where that used to be <laughs> yeah. back then, yeah. you know. So it was a very strange thing because they replicated it all so well. Luke's too, you know, there's a lot of memories in Luke's, the town hall, mm -hmm. always hot in there, always, <laughs> always, I'm always, you know, but, but that's what I mean about appreciating somebody like Michael Winters, you know, he gives these yeah. long speeches yeah, 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 yeah. and I don't know, it was just really a blast. I would have tried taking that di dinner room table home, dining room table. Uh, I got a Dragonfly Inn sign, you heard it here first. <laughs> I didn't ask permission it, for that one. Is it hung up somewhere? It's in, it's huge, so it's in our garage, but it's, it's, it's something that greets me when I come home at the, at the end of the day. Well, so. when you start your inn, you can just <laughs> yes, repurpose oh it. Can you imagine? <laughs> Lorelai's Dragonfly Inn. <laughs> Graham, Graham's <laughs> making an appearance. Maybe she'll cook your pancakes. That'll be my next 10 years. Well, and <laughs> you were writing your book in the process, yeah. talk about, you know, just what that even looked like. Were you just constantly? <sighs> yes, I was, we had an AD, a, a couple of them, but but I, for some reason, you know, they'd call me and I'd like say, this is my computer and I'd just like leave it right there. <laughs> and he'd be like, this is making me crazy. You you need this. And he'd like push it back. And I'd always, it just didn't even become a computer after a while. It was just like that 
ex thing. extension of my hand yeah. and I'd be like shoving it under <laughs> couches and behind pillows and stuff. I mean, I've always done well under pressure. I, I arguably do better, mm -hmm. tragically for me. And, and I'd had this idea to do this book of essays and then when the show was actually happening, yeah. that brought the deadline up. And originally the show wasn't gonna come out until the first week of January. Mm -hmm. So I had until had. then, and then <laughs> yeah. it was Christmas. So I had until then, and then it was Thanksgiving, and, and so like, it was it was really really crazy. Um, Did it make it, it harder to like appreciate the moments you were having, or no? It's honestly that's what doing the original show felt like. like. I mean, we worked the most ridiculous hours, mm -hmm. and you know we were shooting on film. It was just a different time, um, and. So I, I, I can do that, you know, I can work a really long day and also still, back then it was probably more, I'd be reading something or just something to, to try to, you know, fill the time between setups. But um, there's a kind of concentration you can have when, when there really is no choice but to, but to do your work. Um, that was kind of, I don't, I don't need to live that way every day, but mm -hmm. it was, I don't know, it was just kind of part of the magic of that time. Well, and I know Amy and da Dan had like just piles and piles of index cards yeah. of what they were mapping out. Yeah. Um, talk about what your conversations with them were like about the journey Lorelai was going to be taking in these installments. You know, I really trusted them with it. I, I we talked about we talked about wild, you know, mm -hmm. she kept saying to me, but this is Amy, she's very, uh, for some reason the word that comes to me is like scrapbooky, which is not <laughs> what I mean. She does not scrapbook, but she sort of says one thing and then leaves you with it for a uh -huh. minute. And she just kept saying, have you read wild? I was like, yeah, I told you, why are you <laughs> asking me this? And so that was something and then we talked about, you know, if Luke and Lorelai were going to end up together in the original show, I had, I felt very strongly that it shouldn't be a wedding. It shouldn't be a traditional. And then they walked yeah. down the aisle and everything because I feel a sense of responsibility to our people, you know, to, yes, the show is a fantasy in many ways. But it's also such an original piece, and, and these characters are so interesting and original. I just didn't think they'd do, they, if, you know, what's a different way for two people to be happy mm -hmm. together? And, um, and I loved what it was. Somebody said to me, ugh, you, it was, oh, you know, a wedding. Like, isn't that too, you know, do we really want that for them? And yeah. I, I felt you did. Mm -hmm. After all that, after, after all that all time. After all that, And yes. after this journey and, 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 and that, the fact is it, it was a Stars Hollow wedding. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it was fairy lights and yes. dancing girls yeah. and, and kind of a, a dream sequence almost, like you'd have in a musical. And so that made complete sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very concerned about how we were going to address Ed and, um, and his passing. And it made sense to me, you know, I had just finished Parenthood where we lost yeah. our patriarch in that story. Still recovering from that. Me too. Yeah. But the sh this show is has always presented these, and yes, it's in fun language or, you know, this wacky town or whatever. But it it really presents these iconic moments mm -hmm. in in particular women's lives, I think, um, and how they deal with them. You know, I know. Some people wanted Rory to be more of a like slam dunk success mm -hmm. at the beginning. It made sense to me. She's just in her early 30s. She hasn't quite found, you know, she's been, she hasn't quite found her feet underneath her. And so it all just made sense to me. Mm -hmm. And Kelly sort of gave a, a talk, right, about Herman before you guys started shooting or like a, she well, gathered everyone round or something? <sighs> Because that photo, the the painting. Oh my gosh, it was just huge but like I know, and you I feel know. his presence, right? Oh my gosh. Right? Well, the first day we walked onto that set was really rough, uh, all of us together. Because Kelly also, ha she hadn't been there for the first couple of weeks. They put all her stuff together, mm -hmm. so we'd been working and and maybe Alexis and I had maybe I don't even think we'd had a scene in there. I think we all came in the day, saw the big painting, sat. You know, it was emotional. 
and Kelly had been a very close friend of his, close to the family. Um, and she just kind of took a moment and she said, Ed, we know you're here. We love you. You know, she just said something. Mm -hmm. And she said, let us know. Let us know if you, you know, if you want to say hello or something like that. And that day, um, like a light went out in the middle of the scene and she said, thanks, Ed. Oh, so, <laughs> so, you know, it was, she's just such a special person in, mm -hmm. in my life. And, and, um, and yeah, the stuff we got to address together as mm -hmm. those characters was felt really gratifying as well. Yeah. Cause what was it like to see her, Emily's journey in this process too? I mean, I think she, she's just like never been better. I mean, she's so fantastic and, and I always talk about, one of, one of the things I really admire about her as an actor is her restraint. Mm. She doesn't need you to like Emily and thusly we like adore her. You know, she yes. doesn't, she shows a little window here and there of, of what, you know, that vulnerability might, might be. And, and so this was just something, you know, that gave her all these other colors. She's wearing my jeans. She's giving away the, you know, the, the furniture. Um, what was it like seeing Kelly in the jeans? I mean, hilarious. <laughs> First of all, she's the only person in the universe who's like, she's aged 10 years, lost 20 pounds. <laughs> and, and like, she's such a tiny little, you know, powerhouse. Uh -huh. And, and uh, I've literally in life never seen her wear jeans. So the whole thing was just <laughs> hilarious. And also, she just still had yes, her still same, <laughs> you know, she wasn't like, she just still had her same, like, she could have been in Pearls or my concert t-shirt. It's just that she's still Emily. And so it was just really fun. Well, because so often, you know, when we talk about Gilmore Girls, we talk about the relationship between Lorelai and Rory. But some of the, the most striking moments from the revival were the scenes between Lorelai and Emily. Um, particularly starting off with that kitchen fight scene. Yeah. And what was, you know, just talk about exploring that. And did it feel like it was you in that moment or did it feel like it was Lorelai? Honestly, they've overlapped at this point to a confusing degree. degree. But it also, that whole sequence of getting drunk at the wake, yeah. waking up, climbing over the guy in the wheelchair, giving this horrible wrong memory speech that is completely yes. <laughs> so <laughs> the worst thing I could possibly yeah. say. Um, it, it, it just felt like places we hadn't gotten to go before. And, um, and, and I think again, in, in terms of what I love about the show, it makes more sense to me that I'm having, Lorelai's having a conflict with her mom mm -hmm. than her daughter. Her and her daughter now have basically right. worked things out and, and, and can truly be friends without, um, you know, without me n feeling like I need to take care of her. It's really that relationship between Lorelai and Emily that needed more attention and mm -hmm. more healing um, because now they're, now they have each they just have each other. <laughs> and they've gotten a lot closer in mm -hmm. the midst of all that. Mm -hmm. And how about like the therapy scenes where for like some of the few moments we have some silence mm -hmm. in the Gilmore Girls mm -hmm. world, which is a rarity mm -hmm. too, <laughs> but acting alongside her in those moments. Well, it's so many things because what we haven't seen those characters do very much is speak their inner monologue you know and and that's where Lorelai ha has gotten stuck you know she never really to me the what you're in the life is about is this is what happens if you don't grow up you know it, if you if you stay in one place and and that's why in the musical you know when Sutton Foster sings that unbreakable song I think it it pivots her on this journey because she's looking at, in a way, someone who is admitting, you know, we're all vulnerable. Yeah. You, you, you're not, you can't do this by yourself, this, this life, mm -hmm. you know? And I think to a certain degree, she hasn't, you know, she just hasn't grown up and hasn't accepted this man in her life really, not really, you know, and, and hasn't kind of made peace with her mother and it just sends that whole um, journey going. But yes, the stuff with Kelly was just 
could have I wished it I wish I wish we were in a scene right now <laughs> it, I just couldn't get <laughs> enough right of it here. it's such yes. a rich relationship and and I do and Amy has said this in other press so I'm not telling tales mm -hmm. but you know it was really about her and her mom uh, and and something they did together and you know so it was very personal and and that's that's what this whole show felt like to me it was it was the old show but it even more personal and more um, you know emotional for us all could you just sense like how happy Amy was to be back in it? Yeah. When I was there, it was like yeah. you could see like like she was running around, but you could see how happy she was. That's how I felt as well. Yeah. And and it also I think for our relationship and 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 maybe even how she perceives you know working with actors. We were I was you know I'd worked a couple of years, but I was newish mm -hmm. and she had never done a one hour show before and we had more of a traditional kind of boss employee relationship it would never have occurred to me to I mean I, I asked her about certain things but it was very much her vision and this time really felt like we were a company uh, like a, a theater company or something and we we discussed things in a more um, peer mm -hmm. to peer kind of way and it was made it more fun and I said you know this is so much fun to really feel um, a sense of, you know, because I do feel a sense of ownership of that experience, that character, and, and that we could kind of, you know, be working together like that. And she said, we should have always done it like this. Mm. You know, it was just, we both had, we both had a same vision, you know, for, for what we wanted to make. And it was really fun to, um, to just communicate about it. Well, and you got to do something new too with Lorelai in that in the fall installment, you know, when she's going out trying to have her own wild adventure, she gives this like, she calls up Emily to give this anecdote mm -hmm. of which what she hoped she had said all along about her dad. Um, was that invigorating for you? And talk about like, is this something you pushed for with Amy? Like, I want no. something like no, this? No, no, no. But she had mem remembered. Um, what I had, what we had discussed in the original show was just some of the ways our, you know, that her writing was different than, mm -hmm. than most TV. And I said, you know, you should write just a really long speech. You should, I, I don't even know what the longest monologue in, in television is, but this world, again, this sort of heightened, slightly theatrical world could, could, you could have that, you know, you could have I wondered if that would be fun for her to, to really just write a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a, a long monologue. And and she kept saying, "This is another thing," because I didn't read Fall for the longest time. I think the idea. Like, I don't want it to end. <laughs> I didn't want it to end. What if what if it wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be? You know, because there were so many sort of balls in the air, and th that episode was going to really bring them home. And I really was afraid of it. And um, she kept saying, "Remember when we used to talk about?" that monologue idea, you know, and, and what would justify it and what would, what, what could make that make sense, you know, and she's like, it's, you're, you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was, I was afraid of that too. And then, and then when I, you know, read it. Tears. I, I mean, I bawled through the whole, the whole episode, but what I love about it is it's really just a girl having a, a a memory of being younger and and just a small kind of it wasn't like and then we yes. went you know it was a tiny little thing her dad had done for her that meant so much and and it really is to me what what I love I've always loved about the show the writing the idea it's these little tiny things that that mean so much and it's you know nothing happens um I was describing the show to somebody when I was before I'd done it, and they were like, "Wait, do you fight crime?" I was like, "What? <laughs> no, we're just people. We just and and whoever it was was like, that's never going to last. You can't have that on TV." Like, literally thought we had to fight crime because otherwise, which What's by the, the way point? is a wonderful idea, mother daughter crime fighters. <laughs> yes. Um, but so the challenge with that speech, in particular, with the show in general, with that in particular, is it meant so much to me. It it was the answer to this that you know awful story from the beginning and and I knew we're outside <laughs> we're in Malibu 
I just didn't want to grind it down mm. and, 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 and have to do it many times, which meant I had to be rock solid, prepared, which was, had its own downside because I just did, there was nothing about it that I wanted to um, get stale, you know? And I did something I'd never done before, which is just in a f flat, no emotion way, I, I recorded it, I recorded just the words. And, and I would play it in the car. Oh, wow. Um, just so it was in my, you know, mind. If I if we were in New York, I don't think I would have had to do that <laughs> because yeah. you can ha spend time with it. I just wanted to spend time with it as much as I could so that when we got there, it could just be free. free. You know, there's a, there's a um, terrible thing that can happen at times when you want to be the most open where your body just goes, no thanks, I really don't want to go there. And so I was, I just had all kinds of, I was done this long enough now that I was ready for whatever, but my hope was just to have it, you know, do it a couple times and, and be done. And that's, and that's what happened. Cause it also, because it was one take, take. yeah, <laughs> there's nothing, I mean, you can cut to Emily's side of the yeah. phone, but for my purposes, yeah. it's, it's one, one take and, um, yeah. Well, and in that same script, you we finally get those four words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which everyone's like... <laughs> real satisfied by and happy about. <laughs> so. Were you, like, hesitant to turn the page? You had they no... were never written down. <laughs> um, they were not on any page. And, in fact, there was a dummy scene that 95% of our people thought was real. Real. Um, where... What were the words there? It was Rory's on a train, and she... and. And she looks up, and you don't, and she smiles or something, and you don't see who she sees. And somebody says something, but it still had a cliffhanger kind of uh -huh. aspect to it. And I remember somebody in wardrobe being like, "Well, and then we, you know, we have to do that Rory train scene." And I was like, "You guys, it's <laughs> not a scene. It's not the real, you know." And it was so that was funny. And then, and then, you know, she'd never told me the words. I didn't know what they were until we were halfway through shooting and she told me were you I like said, huh yeah i said wait what <laughs> she said yeah it's blah 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 i still can't even say it i've been so like traumatized <laughs> and i was like huh huh it like it sort of like made sense the longer i thought about it do you still are you fine with it or are you like i didn't i wanted something else for her or what you know, I'm so in it. I I just really try not to judge, judge it, it at all. It 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 all felt great to me. I I was more concerned with. I think she wanted it to feel this like this sort of suspended moment. Like yeah. you don't know what happens next. My instinct was to have a bigger reaction. You know, t of joy or yeah. it, it it just something about the. You know, filmmaking of it was just what she wanted Love it to it, be, yeah. which is which is kind of, and then, you know, the screen goes black or whatever, <laughs> and people go, what? <laughs> so, but, you know, I think I think the, the part of what's smart about that is, I don't know, I, or what I like about it better is, I like that better than, and then you'll never hear from any of these people yes. ever again. Yeah. I, I think. There's for, an open-endedness. Yeah, too. and for something that, even if it's dissatisfying to some people, it keeps the characters alive, and I, I think that's that's smart. How many times did you guys do that scene? Say those words, or say the words? Uh, that had a couple more pieces to it, but you know, that wasn't, it, it, and, and of course, the way these things always work, you're not doing it on the last day, you know, yeah. it was in the middle of, my family was there, it was like, it was around my birthday, um, so, you know, those things like, that that everybody else is waiting for probably aren't our there. biggest days. You know, it's like, but it was everybody had to sign a non-disclosure. And, you know, that was really the fear was given the world we live in now. We just didn't want things to get out, you know, before people had, had a chance to see the show. And now how often are you asked who's the baby daddy? I am asked. I never have an answer. I um you know, but is that like the central question? I, I think they know who it is. I, I just go with the Wookie because why not? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, 
We're going to take a few questions. Um, you mentioned Amy Sherman Palladino took improv of yours during A Year in the Life. People what was this. it? I don't know. I, I would have to watch the show, which, as everyone knows, is going to take me another decade. But I, it was in my house, and it's I'm walking from the kitchen to the living room, and it's a, part of a list of things. I will have this answer for you the <laughs> next time we're here. I don't know. Any, any word on another season? No. I think if there was word we would have heard that word by now you don't have any emails none okay and in fact you know she's on her she's on mrs mazel and yeah pouring herself any into chance that. of you going on that i said to her there's a character that i sort of do in the i don't know because i haven't seen enough of this uh -huh. they're still making the show i love that time period in new york and there's a it sort of goes back to caroline in the city your favorite uh -huh. show um there's this thing, it's from like a um, Judy Holiday movie. It, Amy has me do it for her for fun. It's like, it's this character and she's a New Yorker, but she's, you know, it's like she has me say, I think it's in the show, hooray for the Goldbergs. <laughs> Is that in the show? <laughs> um, <laughs> but so she's like, and that's, you know, you could be that, ca like I'm a cigarette girl at like a, some, I mean, oh if I did that show, I would want to to do something of the time and do something quite different than, you know, I don't want to just be rocking in like, hey guys, uh, anybody got a coffee? Uh oh, you know, like I can't. But I. But we need to make it happen in some way. I just love any like time period New York. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know. You're there. Yeah. Would you rather live in Stars Hollow with the Gilmores or Berkeley with the Bravermans? Guys, come on. <laughs> um, I mean. Stars Hollow seems like I seem more fun there. I feel like my my wardrobe's louder, <laughs> the coffee's free. Uh, I know everybody, so Stars Hollow. <laughs> when are we gonna get the Parenthood? I don't know. Nothing. No. No emails on that either. No emails. <laughs> um, people are really, really bummed out about Linda from HR. Oh. Can you like put it on YouTube for us or something? <laughs> I don't. I don't think legally I can. <laughs> I. I haven't seen that either. Um, I heard it's really good. It was always quite an ambitious premise, mm -hmm. and kind of cable-y. And you know, pilot season is like a very intense dating game. It's like if it's not love at first sight for both people, right? It's okay. It, it's okay. You know. It. But what I really love is I got to do something pretty different. Different. And and. Um, and it was a great idea, you know. It's just, I can see why on a network you'd feel like it's one of those shows you really have to have seen the episode before, and right. so it was worth a try. Maybe some other time. We're gonna, we're gonna end with a lightning round. Oh, Be God. ready. Channel your inner lower lie. Okay. Last show you binge watched? Uh, the Americans, but I, well, Feud, Feud. Feud. Yeah. Which, not Handmaid's Tale? Uh, no, I'm saving it all, okay. yeah. What show that you love would you want to sit and watch someone else enjoy for the first time? Um, well, I've done this. I have more movies than shows with broadcast news. A couple times I mm -hmm. showed that to May for the first time. And some of, the, some of the 80s movies that were really important to me are very fun to show. Okay. If you could go back and be on any classic show, what would it be? I mean, Friends? <laughs> Friends, probably, Friends. yeah. What genre would you like to try? Uh, you know, now I'm going to, I really just want to be doing half hour comedy now in television. And, and I, at some point would really love to do a play again of, mm. of any kind. But for some reason like this, because I've gotten to do so much in the contemporary space, I'm really drawn to, you know, I was really, I loved Feud so much and I loved Downton Abbey. Like, I'm very drawn to, to mm -hmm. things not of this time for okay. some reason. Walter White or Tony Soprano? to do what with. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like this follow-up. <laughs> Whatever you want. I mean, you've got so many complications <laughs> in both cases. I don't know. Supra Tony? I, I don't know. I don't know. I need more information. <laughs> what was your first acting job and what did you learn from it that you're still using now? Well, my first paid acting job was crazily enough playing a pregnant teenager in a Planned Parenthood um, training video where they um, they were 
it was a very mild thing, but it was sort of how to counsel a young girl who comes in and, and is pregnant. I was wearing my stepmother's like maternity dress and, um, <laughs> and you know, I, I don't know what I learned from that. <laughs> uh, the pillows don't look real as a pregnancy <laughs> stomach. I mean, um, you know, I, I, some of my other first professional work was as an apprentice at a summer theater, which is, you know, like painting fences and yeah, cleaning yeah. bathrooms and then like being like, yeah. you know, in the background of Oklahoma. And, <laughs> and I remember someone saying, you know, do every job like you're getting paid, hmm. you know, like you're getting like what you deserve or, or, or better, you know, and that, um, that got me through a lot of pretty crummy unpaid jobs. <laughs> I was like, pretend, just pretend. pretend. On that note, let me pretend. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us here. And Lauren, thanks for coming Thank by. Thank you. If you want to check out more of our Emmy chats, head over to latimes.com. Thanks, guys. Thanks. That was so fun.